Before starting with this video, there are two prior videos that are helpful for you. The first was on setting up an assignment, and the second was on how to set up the electronic submission process for students. Now we're going to look at the electronic grading process for instructors and teaching assistants. Once the due date for the assignment has passed, you can start with grading. Click on Course Admin and then on the Assignments link. In this overview, you will see the file submitted for each assignment as well as the due date. Click on the assignment you wish to start grading and at the bottom, you will see a summary of the submissions. You can filter this list if you wish to quickly find assignments that have yet to be graded and those that have already been graded. Notice that there is an option here to send email to students who have not yet submitted. To help with the electronic grading process, there are two helpful icons to click on. The first is the flag. If there is something unusual about that item, you can flag it and come back to them later. Secondly, there is this icon here to indicate whether the assignment has been read or not. This can be especially helpful when you have a number of TAs grading to quickly locate assignments that have yet to be graded. Now the grading can proceed in one of three ways. You can remain entirely within Brightspace and grade, or you can download a zip file of all the submitted items to grade offline. If you do that download, you can grade the items, provide comments in the individual files, rezip up the folder of submissions, and upload that zip file over here. Brightspace will unzip it and redistribute the files back with all their comments to the students. The third option is to grade on an app. This app works on mobile tablet devices and allows you to annotate and comment the document as if you were grading with pen and paper. Here we are going to look at how you can grade within Brightspace. Select the first student and their document is shown within the browser. Here you can read it, but you cannot comment directly on the document. You can, however, add text feedback over here on the side in the box. If you associated the assignment with an item from the gradebook, then you will be asked to enter a score as well. And that score can be copied over to the gradebook automatically once you publish the grades. You can also attach feedback as a file, maybe an audio recording or a printed out version of the assignment where you've gone and written up comments, scanned it and re-uploaded it. When you are finished, you can choose to save this as draft and proceed on to the next student and to the next student and so on. Once you have graded everyone, you can come back, do a fine tuning of the grades, a fine tuning of the feedback, and then hit publish to publish that feedback to the student. The moment you hit publish, the students will receive their feedback and grade. You will also notice that there's an option for a rubric. Rubrics are a great way to get consistency, especially when you have a large team of graders. There is another video that demonstrates how to use the rubric. If you don't have time to complete the grading in one go, you can click back to submissions over here, and then you can come back later to resume your work. This process also works for multiple graders. You can split up the grading amongst multiple people, and then you, as the instructor, can approve the final grades. Notice that when we return back to the screen, these assignments that we have viewed have been marked as read. Instead of individually clicking publish, for every student submission. You could return back to this screen, the submission screen, select all students here with a checkbox, and then click on publish feedback. There is also a submission log where you can carefully track exactly what has happened with every assignment and the assignment submission process.